Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today is part two of the um, beds from scratch, dollhouse beds from scraps uh, video. Today we're going to be dressing um, the beds that I made the other day. Um, I'm trying not to cry. I just want to say to everybody out there, um, I appreciate you at the time of the filming of this um, this video. I realized I had 100 subscribers. And I just want to tell you guys, um, wow, thank you. I'm really excited about this channel. You all are very encouraging. And I'm excited about going forward um, with this. And um, yeah, I'm going to go on to the video so that I don't cry on the video. But I want to say a special thank you to all of my subscribers and I want to thank you again to those who even if you haven't subscribed but you've been watching I appreciate you um so let's go ahead and get to the video where we are dressing um the dollhouse beds from scraps okay all right thanks so much okay so here are two beds uh that we made on the video the two beds from scraps video and just a heads up you've got bonus footage on this um, video with two other beds that i had made previously now this is one of the beds i made previously this is a bonus bed um, i made it had made the mattress but i never finished it it was a little bit short so i decided to add some feet to it to make it a little higher Okay, so I used my uh, Gorilla Wood Glue, Gorilla Gel Glue, and added a brass pin through the bead. It's just a bead with some brass wire around it. And I thought it would just be pretty as um, a foot for the bed, and it would give it a, a few more um, centimeters as far as in height. Okay, so you let the gel gel glue dry, and then I'm going to actually drill a small hole into the leg of the bed so i'm letting that dry so it'll be set and i actually had several more they actually were beads off of an old necklace so scrap pieces from an old necklace can be feet for your bed so i'm just making the marks um they look a little random but they look central to me central marks and i'm going to just use my pin drill to make a small starting hole um because the 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 brass pins are you know have a point on them so i don't actually have to go really far i just need to get the um, hole started and then i begin to press it and i think that pin needed a little bit of encouragement so i said well let me get me something to help press it in a little bit more force there we go and then this shows me i put a little glue on the tip of the pin just to make sure that it stays secure all right, so now I'm beginning to paint the beds. Now, this was one of the ones that I made in the um, original video. I started out with a brown tone, and then I decided that was a little dark. So I had a color um, from my folk art um, acrylic paint collection called Linen. So I mixed my real brown acrylic paint with the color called Linen. And it gave me this kind of cool taupe color. And with the, the brown and the cream or linen color, it kind of gave me a kind of a streaky, streaky wood effect, which I really like because to me, it looked vintagey. And, you know, wood comes in lots of different colors. So if you're painting, um, if you even if you don't have stain, don't feel like you're relegated to just brown because wood comes in lots of shades, grays and browns and reds and even colors that look um, almost orange so that's how the bed was finished it looked kind of streaky kind of antique look old but i really think that added a nice finish to that particular design of the bed okay so i'm going to just sit it aside for a moment and start painting uh, the bonus bed now this got kind of weird. I started to paint it and I really didn't like it, but I had already started, so I kept going. And I really, really, the more I did it, the more I didn't like it. So I started to paint it with Mod Podge. 
and in the midst of it, I got this weird yellow color, and I actually liked it. Yeah, just some white gesso, but with the burnt umber and the black, the, the white from the gesso, the black, and the burnt umber, it gave me a yellow color. I think it looks kind of cool. So I just stayed with it. I finished it up and went on to the third bed. So in this one, I actually used the raw or burnt umber um, paint more or less straight from the tube. And I just went with it because I've seen woods that looked a little yellowish. I didn't have any stain uh, that would give that effect. But that's the color I wanted this bed to be. So I kept going with it and I wanted it to have kind of more of a streaky effect. So I added a little water to it. So it would be a little bit more thinned out and thinning it just came, gave me more of a variation in the color so that the paint color wouldn't be so solid. I didn't want to have that coated look. I wanted it to be thin and absorb into the wood like it was a type of a stain. And it was coming along really good. I was very pleased with um, the overall look of it. Sometimes at first when you're painting, it looks really, really pre-K. But you have to keep working on it. And when you get around the edges, you have to go carefully to make sure it covers well. But the more I kept going, the better it looked. And this is my finish. I was very, very pleased with that. Very, very pleased. I might later on go back over it with some dry brushing to bring up the highlights. But overall, I like that base tone for this bed. Very nice. I hope you can see the detailing and the, the variations in how the, the paint went on there to kind of give it a wood effect. So here we are ready to dress the beds. So this was the one that I just finished. I just put the mattress in so you could see how it looked. And that was the mattress I made when I originally made the beds. And I'm going to leave those on there just like that as if they were fitted sheets. Now, I'm not going to attempt to match my fabrics. Oh, and that's one of that's the bonus bed or one of the bonus beds. So this was the second bonus bed. So I'm going to kind of get it out of the way. But I'm going to show you more than one way to finish um, a bed. So in this instance, this was a leftover. Um, it was a scrap from a cosmetic bag I had. And I really liked the lining on the inside, the print. I thought it was really pretty. And I thought it would really suit the purpose of this bed. And I liked it because it had batting in it, like kind of a quilt feeling. So I decided to fold it to give a little variation in the linen. And I kind of tucked it under there. So you'll have to play around with it to see what looks good to you. And even though they don't match, I think it coordinates nicely. Because if you would think if a person um, had a rooming house, all the linens may not match. Everything is clean, but it may not match. So I know I need to make a small hem. And so I got out my handy glue applicator and put some fabric fix there along the edge. Now I didn't measure it, but I kind of knew about how much I needed to fold it over so that it wouldn't drag on the floor. And I pressed it down as hard as I could with my hands. And then I folded the top part where I wanted to have that fold in the beginning of the comforter or the quilt. So I could see that other design on the fabric. And that just gives a little variation to the linens, especially since I wasn't going to add a sheet. Now you definitely could have added a sheet. You could have done a whole sheet or you could have just made it where it's a little bit peeking out. But I chose not to do that. Now I did um, want my bed linens to look a little messy. I don't like um, perfect beds in particular. Like I want it to look like maybe somebody sat on it or just got up or just got out of it. So I did use my clover iron to secure that um, small hem I put in it. You, and the clover iron is, is a really great tool, but it's super, super hot. I mean, unforgivingly hot. So be very careful if you use one. Now for the fringe, I used my burlap. And that looks really like fringe to me. Now when you get a moment, check out one of my other videos. I do use burlap quite a bit in my miniatures. But I made some great brooms with burlap. So check that video out as well. And I did it on both sides. 
Now this other side of the hem, I had a, a little, it needed a little bit more encouragement. And so it was trying to oppose me right there on that corner. But with the help of the clover iron, I got it to stick. Yeah, I struggled with it for a little bit. But in the end, I won. And added my fringe. And I thought that added a nice little detail to uh, the edge of that quilt. I really did. I thought it looked really, really nice. And by the by the burlap being dark, it, it to me, it looked a little bit more vintage. Now, when you decide to put your um, blanket on your bed, you're definitely going to have to play with it a while to determine how you want it to sit. Now, in miniature blankets and fabrics and things, they don't like to wrinkle. They don't like to um, fold and drape like you'd like them. So there's a couple different techniques that can be used. In this instance, I just kind of arranged it the way I wanted it because I'm not going to be putting my dolls actually in the beds. So there are portions I'm going to just glue to the bed itself. Now I was just testing to see how the pillow would look. But I added a little dab of my fabric fix in between two layers of the glue. I mean, two layers of the blanket. And then I just pressed them where I wanted them to stick. And here I'm using my clover iron to iron in wrinkles. That's usually not what iron is used for. It's usually used to take wrinkles out. But it would be like my aunt said, I'm putting cat faces into the blanket. Just creasing it where I like it because I want it to look rumpled up like somebody just sat down or just got out of it or just that it had been used. I don't want it to look perfect. I want my bedrooms and my beds and things to look like they have life, that there's someone's been there, someone's been in it, someone's gotten out of it. So yeah, so you'll have to work with it a while to get the look that you want. Now, when you're using the clover iron, make sure you're using fabrics that can handle the heat. Everything I'm using right now is cotton, 100% cotton, so the iron doesn't bother that. But if you were using um, fabrics that are synthetic, yeah, you're not going to make it. It'll just melt it. So be very careful. And you see at the bottom of that bed, I have little wooden balls as the legs. So that's... I'm like liking the way that looks. So moving on to um, work on the quilt that I had for one of the other beds. I really like the fabric, but it just looked a little too bright. I liked that it. it had the, the, the quilted or patchwork quilt um, print on it, but it just looked too, too bright. I mean, it just looked just like Crayola bright. And I was trying to tone it down, so I brushed on a little bit of wood. See, it kind of toned it down a little bit, and that, that helped. But I didn't think it was dark enough still, so I steeped it in some tea. So I'm going to have to let that dry. So we're moving back on to one of the other beds. Now this was a fabric I really, really liked, but it was kind of thin, but I really liked the print. So I was trying to work with the size to determine how much I needed to cut because it was a scrap piece. So you, if you're working with scraps, you don't have much left in the first place. So you don't want to lose too much. So I was just trying to determine how much I would have to trim it to make it right. Now in this instance, because this fabric was so thin, I used liquid stitch. And liquid stitch is really great for thinner fabrics. I actually use it. Um, when I work on or making doll clothes, it doesn't bleed through and it catches really quick as well. So I like it. It doesn't leave stains. And I just like it for finer, finer fabrics like that. So in this instance, for this particular blanket, because the fabric was so thin, it didn't have batting or quilting in it. I doubled it up. And it made a seam down the middle. So almost like a sleeve with two open ends. And I ironed down the seam to encourage the curing of the glue. And then I had to um, fold in, as I fold, fold in 
the edges. You'll see it in a moment, but that's the seam that I was working on to secure and make sure that center seam was down. And now I'm just ironing it with my iron. And again, be very, very careful. The clover iron, it is unforgiving. It is unforgiving. So be really careful with your hands. And definitely, if you sit it down, make sure where you sat it isn't it near anything that can burn, melt, or catch on fire. So it was at the right length on the bed. So I felt confident that I could just turn it in and finish the hem. So as I mentioned, I made it like a sleeve. So I made a small seam all the way around the edge of each seam. And then I added li liquid stitch to glue it. Yep. And then after I got that, I kind of spread it out with my um, pointed tool just to make sure that it was even. I didn't want it to clump up. I'm sorry, I'm a little out of focus here. Oh, let me bring it back. Yeah, that's better. And just folded it in. I really like the print on this. Okay, and again, using the iron to encourage uh, the glue to cure faster. Now, this is definitely an edited video. So this video is only like 33 minutes long, including the introduction and the ending. It took me um, quite a while to do the whole weekend to do these, uh, the linen, the painting uh, of the beds. Uh, so don't, don't try to do it in 30 minutes. Take your time, plan out what you're going to do. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because you may change your mind, but don't be in a hurry to get it done. I mean, the dolls are not going to be angry if you if their beds aren't finished um, by the weekend, but then maybe they will. But take your time so that it looks like something that you'll like for a long time. You don't want to rush it, do it, waste your fabric, and be unhappy with it. Because if you don't like it, you, you just don't like it, and you're not going to be satisfied with it. So take your time so you'll make something that you're happy with and something that you're proud to display in your dollhouse. So I'm just finishing that other side. So these steps that I'm going over in this particular part, I won't duplicate them um, in the, the linens that I do use the same technique, but I'm showing you in this instance, just so you'll understand how I did it. This one was done like in a sleeve technique where I had a center seam and then I closed the two ends. So let's go ahead and put that, try that on the bed and see how it fits. And I tuck it at the end where the end of the mattress is so I can get a nice little fold in the corner. And even though it doesn't match the fitted sheet or the mattress, I think the colors coordinate nicely. It looks pretty. So you're going to have to play with your um, linens a little bit. You know, you, you don't want to just stick them on there. You're going to have to play with them a while. So sometimes you have to walk away. Now, here I went on to make the pillowcase for the little um, pillow I'm going to make um, for the bed to kind of just give myself a break to think about it. Because sometimes when you're designing and making, making up the beds and things, you're not, you may not have the full idea right at the beginning. Sometime it'll have to come to you. So turn away, do something else, and then come back to it. Don't try to rush through it if you're not um, securing what you want to do to it. So I went on to make the pillowcase because that was a simple project. I knew the, the basic shape and I knew I wanted a pillow. So I went ahead and did that and that gave me time to think about and get inspiration for what I wanted to do for the bed. So I came back and did something similar ironing wrinkles in to the bedspread and I really think that those colors really complement that really muted um, paint job that we did on the actual bed and I'm just pressing in some wrinkles so I'll have a shape of how I want it glued when I finally glue it 
And you see how I did that little corner? So I went back to the pillow and played with that a little bit. And I hope you can follow along with me. I know um, I'm kind of videotaping in kind of a Pulp Fiction type uh, format. So I'll let you see how it all came together for me in the process. Not happy with that pillow, but I'll come back. So here we are back with that bonus bed with the little brass um, feet on it. I played around with the blanket, couldn't really get my inspiration for it. I finished off the edges, played with it a little bit. So yeah, that's it. So now I'm back here with the other bed. And I decided to add some scrap lace. I had an old belt with elastic waist and it actually had some really pretty lace on it. And so I decided to cut it off of the old belt and add it as trim for that bed. I was looking for inspiration and I found some more scraps. I'm sure you have some old um, accessories, uh, scarves, old uh, dr dresses and things that have lace on them look around at what you have i'm sure you have a lot of really great things you could use for your miniatures all of these are scraps and i just want to encourage you to imagine and create out of what you already have it's nothing wrong with buying things but sometimes you can make something really great with things that you already have so look around I thought this was a really pretty lace and then I really think it added a nice decorative dimension for this this bed. These beds are going to go in a little girl's room. So these beds are for two little girls in the dollhouse. So I did want them to be kind of pretty. I wanted them to be different, but I definitely wanted them to be pretty. Like some extra care was taken to do the girl's room. So that's looking really good. And see how that nice little scallop, that adds a nice detail. So I definitely, definitely wanted to make it look a little bit messy. Because even though it's a little girl, she may not be that neat. So I was tucking it in under the bottom of the mattress. And bending my corners in. And I think that drape really looks nice. I didn't add any quilt batting or anything to it. But just doubling up the fabric really gave it a nice body to it. And it's a really nice um, weight cotton. So it actually is bending really well. I added a little fabric fix to make it catch where I wanted it to catch. And be very careful in the placement of your glue because you don't want to put it anywhere that it'd be, it would be seen. Now you see how I'm making the wrinkles around there so I wanted to be pulled down and expose more of the sheet but I think that looks really really pretty I love this print and you have to keep turning your um, project or your item to see how everything falls because you want to look at it from several different angles depending on how it would be viewed you don't want it to look off so I came back to the bonus bed and decided to add fringe to that now the fringe on this bed i didn't use burlap this time this was fabric that was uh, the selvage edge from another type of fabric i had laying around and that freight portion to me looked like miniature fringe so i went with it same technique just added a little glue And I didn't go through showing you all that because we had already done that with the burlap. But I'm just showing you again, it's a selvage edge to another piece of fabric. And I'm doing the second side. And it turned out really nice. So these two little girls beds are going to look really, really pretty. Now this bed, I actually did use the matching fabric fabric as I mentioned before but I'm going to use a slightly different technique to make my wrinkles the weight of this fabric is a little bit different 
so it wasn't given in like the the other bed so I tucked it around because I decided that this would be the neat little girl's bed so after I got everything kind of smoothed around and laid it and I laid it down I wanted it to look tucked so this um, spread is a little bit longer than the other one. So again, I've said you're going to have to play with it a little bit. And like I said, play is a part of the process. You really can't do miniatures if you don't play. So as I mentioned, this fabric was a little bit different. So I used a water and glue solution. I mixed uh, tacky glue and water. And it, it gives kind of a... Mm, a really thin or skim milk looking um, solution, but it helps you to design your bed and helps you enhance the wrinkles. And when it dries, your bed or your fabrics, of uh, whatever you're doing with it, will take on whatever shape you've pinched it into. Now, you definitely can use pins or clips or clamps, but I'm going to just encourage it a little bit with a little bit of my fabric fix to squeeze it down and again this was the neat bed so I didn't want a lot of wrinkles in this one but I did want it some gentle draping I just didn't want it to look like the bed spread is just sticking out at the end I wanted it to kind of look like it had some weight to it and miniatures miniature fabric just has a tendency to not want to drape because it's too short and I'm turning it from side to side to see how it looks and pinching it in the corners because a blanket wouldn't sit up like that, you know, in real life. So the water solution helped to encourage the drape. And then I added a little glue to the side to hold it while it's drying. So I'm very pleased with how this bed is, is turning out. I'm definitely going to do some pillows and some extra trim. But this was my basic design for this bed. And see, I'm pinching it a little bit to give it a little bit more drape. So you have to like take the time to look at your project to see how you want it to drape. But that's the basic design. And now for a basic pillow. So for this bed, I actually did two pillows. So I did pillowcases and I stuffed them and just tucked them. Just really neatly. Now there are a lot of things that you can use to stuff your pillows from cotton to foam, seeds to little beads. But in this instance, I had some leftover gauze and I tucked it in there because I just wanted a slight puff. I didn't want them to be super puffy. And those are my two pillows. So I went back to my other pillow. It needed help. So I added a little bit of the same lace that I had added to the trim of the bedspread. So now that looks like a set. Those beds turned out really cute. Really, really cute. And see how the drape is? Little wrinkles. It doesn't look perfect, but it looks good. I'm really happy with the way this project is turning out it was really really fun and when you're working on a project like this when you get on a roll you have to go with it so we came back to the quilt now this i call it the paint and tea um, muted uh quilt i really love that design but it looks so much better now to me it looks a little bit more muted i didn't like it looking so bright and stark that didn't look natural for old rooming house so I did the same technique as I did um, with the other. So I didn't go into a lot of detail here. Now this one, I had two, two pieces. So I had to bond them together and I kind of more or less did it like a little pillow and then turned it inside out. So it was slightly different from the sleeve design because it was two pieces. The other one was one piece that I folded over and put a middle seam in. This one, it was two pieces. I had to glue glue it in like it was a little um, pouch. But the same technique in general. Now, for this one, because I had a little bit more fabric, 
I allowed the quilt to be longer and more drapey. So you'll see after I smooth it out here with my iron to get a general design, I actually allowed this blanket to puddle around the edges or on the floor of the bed. And I definitely used the water and glue solution to encourage the folds to lay down. So after I designed it, put my water solution on it, I allowed it to dry and use a few pins. So here it is. The two beds that I made all from scraps, including the mattress and the linens, everything was leftover scraps. Used that lace off of an old belt, stuffed the pillows with some leftover gauze. The second bed, that I made from scraps. I did a little basic white pillow just out of an old uh, handkerchief. Then this was the bonus bed. It had been left over, had a long time, added those brass beads to the bottom to give it a little lift, painted it, got a really, really nice fringe on there from some leftover from a salvage edge of another fabric. And this was another old bed that I made out of a leftover cosmetic bag and some burlap. Now, come on. Look at all the wonderful things I was able to make with leftovers. Scrap wood, leftover foam, cardboard, leftover pieces of fabric, random beads off old necklaces. I just want to encourage you to create and imagine. Just consider the possibilities. Look at the things you have around you. You have all kinds of small, little small pieces and remnants off of things that could be made into wonderful miniatures. But you have to give yourself some time. You collect what you see, but take the time to just imagine and create and think about, think about what we did today and consider what you could do. I really would love to hear about what you're doing. Thank you so much for everyone for watching Little Gretchen's Workshop. Definitely check out my other video on um, furniture that I'm making. Check out my playlist because this is the first of the series of the Rooming House Doll House furniture. So definitely be looking out for more video footage. There is one for a cabinet out there already. Another special thank you to my current subscribers and also to those who haven't subscribed but you've been watching. I appreciate you as well. Have a great day, dolls. Thank you for watching Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now.